Today we are going to look at the last 24 hours of Nancy Spungen's life and see what the world looked like through her eyes. Her mom has said about her that she lacks, lacked sympathy, empathy, guilt. She had a strong desire to hurt their um, family pet cat. Um, she was extremely uh, manipulative and um, growing up a hardcore drug addict, she prostituted herself for these drugs. She didn't care about anything, but at the same time, she did have her good qualities. She was a very strong woman. Um, so I'm gonna do the energy work as well as look at the solar arc um, and see what the hell was going on with her um, internally. She, her emotions were very difficult for her to deal with and everyone else. This made it impossible to be in her life without in some form of, of like, just, there was just so much stress and dysfunction and what have you. And it was just very hard on her um, and the people around her to keep these relationships um, going. So people just decided they didn't like her and uh, steered clear of her. Nancy was running the show. She was the one who had to be in charge, always right. She controlled things. She dominated her family. At the same time, she was very smart. I mean, just because you're insane doesn't mean you're, you're not intelligent. In fact, a lot of crazy people are really smart. Um, she uh, had an IQ of 129 to 133. Uh, she did script, skip grades, but she did fail academically. Um, so she became a drifter. Um, Sid would be like tripped out. He would like go to friends like as, as a, a rescue. <laughs> like, man, Nancy's telling me she wants me to kill myself. And he's like, I play her games, but she's nuts. And you know, he, he was always very stressed out. And Nancy was like this. She, she started go-go dancing. She was already into the prostitution. Um, and she uh, was a dominatrix to, to you know, slap men around a bit who like it. She was in control always. Everything she did, she wanted to be in control. She wanted to be in the spotlight. So she, her ultimate goal in life, how is she going to get there? Be a groupie. And um, so sex for her was something she felt where she was in control and could dominate. Nancy was very angry as a child and all, all through her entire life. They put her on medication as a child, some pretty heavy drugs, like I don't think they put kids on these days. Um, the public school did not want her, so she had to go to a special school <laughs> um, for um, children with emotional issues. Um, looking like running um, 
uh, Nancy's personality through a uh, psychological evaluation checklist um, it, it indicates that she is a psychopath. Um, now children do show those tendencies of being a psychopath that you see it when they're kids. Um, but on top of, of schizophrenia, um, she has anti or had anti personality disorder along with pathological narcissism. So Sid, looking at his profile along with hers is um, in running him through a psychological profile. Um, he seems to have suffered from a codependent personality disorder. So, okay, they were both really morbid, um, but the, the relationship was just it was intense. And um, Nancy's mom said that Nancy was always just physically abusive, screaming, um, bullying her, her siblings. And um, Sid, here he was, he was, he was drawn to strong personalities because he was kind of a, a laid-back, shy dude, quiet guy. Quiet, shy, easygoing guys, they are attracted to the feminine masculine. Nancy was the one who fueled their addictions together, but the Sid was already hooked. Um, she was his first love. Nancy was Sid Vicious' first love. Johnny Rotten says he feels so bad to this day ever even inviting Sid Vicious to join um, the band and be part of the band because he never had a chance. And then he introduced him to Nancy, who's you know a heroin addict and um, feeding his addictions, and <sighs> it's just terrible. So um, and she's a hooker. So Nancy was diagnosed with schizophrenia at 15 years old. She was expelled from college. Um, so looking at we've, what we've got is we've got Sid, his really chill guy. Uh, we've got Nancy with her, her schizophrenia. Um, she was volatile, spontaneous. She could start crap for no reason. And then with them both being on drugs, it was probably the ninth circle of hell like all the time. Nancy was called a whiner. People, you know, said that uh, Sid, they really, they liked him, but when he was around her, he was an asshole. So his personality just totally changed. Um, fact is, Nancy came to New York to snag a musician, and um, she swept Sid off his feet after Johnny Lydon didn't want any part of her. Um, and then, their relationship was like she'd cut her wrists and she wouldn't do anything to stop the blood she'd just be walking around with like blood gore everywhere just dripping on the floor and she'd be Sid doesn't love me anymore he wants to leave me and she'd tell people this they didn't give a damn you know um you know but Sid uh, had a very strong empathy for her and when he would you know be with his bandmates and whatnot uh, he would tell people to check in on her because she was alone and he he cared he really he loved her he lost his virginity to nancy he, they have that special bond and and they always would she wanted to make sid vicious a star but Sid Vicious was already a star. He didn't need her. He, you know, people loved him. She did nothing but give him disease and make him impotent and ineffective. You know, um, no one wanted her. And the more time um, Sid spent with her, he ostracized, ostracized himself from his career and everything to do with the connections with other people that he was now alienating. The fact is, Sid needed, like, everything he was doing, his connections with other people were part of his career, and he was just being isolated, he was alienating others, it's just a mess. And, you know, of course, she has her schizophrenia, and that's definitely why I'm, I'm, I'm thinking all that happened. Um, Nancy was very pretty, Sid thought she was so beautiful, 
and you know naturally his first love his first experience nothing's going to ever uh, take that away or or, or whatever um, he had a very unstoppable love for her naturally they weren't together that long but even still um, Johnny Lydon said they beat the shit out of Nancy um, when they, they drove her uh, were driving her to the airport to um, have her just leave to just to get away from Sid. She she busted out of the car and there was a police officer um, Standing there and she was just like hideously yelling in the streets um, The sex pistols have kidnapped me and you know shortly after that they broke up Nancy always wanted to be in full control and so obviously she was being um, his manager but she was a schizophrenic hooker a prostitute that that's not like not only was her personality volatile but she was a hooker no one has respect for that you know um so how was that going to do anything for his career i mean all she could produce is, is Sid stumbling, you know, sideways and throwing up and pissing on himself. You know, they did seem happy when they were out and about together, um, but she just kept, you know, giving him excessive drugs like alcohol, never encouraging him to sober up just more and more. It was almost like that was her way of offering love to him or keeping control over him but whatever it was she just kept filling up his drink never you know hey you know some water any she was just wasn't that type of person she had no nurturing abilities um and i'm not saying that's like a hundred percent she did it's just um that was her lifestyle that was her way sid suffered depression obviously um, he was unstable, cutting himself to release pain, basic. Um, with Nancy's schizophrenia, you know, um, and, you know, her always indicating how she wanted to die, they were just very uh, depressed. Um, right off the bat, Nancy's energy that I get from her, she's just so flighty. Like, she was incapable of of ever remaining faithful um, because she she needed to interact with other people which I think is really interesting because she wanted to be part of the scene like everything that's going on but she ostracized the scene and the scene ostracized her she lived it deeply within her head which is not something uncommon but with her mental illness it did make it impossible virtually to function in the real world um, she needed to be taking her proper medication um, and you know then she would have the challenges even still of, of having her mental illness um, schizophrenics are very paranoid people and they are out of touch with reality as far as how they uh, experience things Nancy was out there trying to live like a normal person but her version of normal, as you can tell, was very different from another person's um, normal. She was incapable of ever being able to live a normal life due to her mental illness. Um, any uh, moments of stress, stress, heavy emotion could trigger an actual schizophrenic episode. Um, it could be like driving on the freeway, rush hour or something, it could trigger a schizophrenic episode where it, it could put her life and the lives of others in danger type of thing very scary the main cause of premature death as far as uh, schizophrenia is suicide which would explain her heavy suicidal tendencies she probably had hallucinations delusions which would indicate that um, she um, would have her moments where she couldn't think straight um, her illness impaired her ability to function properly uh, and you know there's no way in hell she was capable of being said vicious manager Nancy died October 12 1978 um, so let's take a look at the last 24 hours of her life 
uh, with some energy work, solar arc work. Right here, I can see how um, damaged she was um, psychologically. And I'm sure, you know, even though it was this day, um, I'm, I'm sure she was that way all the time. As far as her psychological makeup, she was going through uh, many conflicts within herself. And it's like um, she was chasing her destiny. And yet at the same time, it's like she was literally ship shifting, literally changing. And um, the conflict, she had a strong will and this was creating conflict with people around her. So it's kind of like every time somebody saw her coming, there was always some type of um, um, a commotion um, or just some type of stress based on her uh, self-expression. This is what she was going through. So this was affecting her physical vitality, obviously. But an interesting thing is she had a lot of energy to do what she wanted to do um, whatever her priorities were and she was going through some big changes within her life but whatever this change was that was going to transpire it would have actually helped her go into a new healthier direction like growing up adulting the energy though that's really thick that matches up with the solar arc energy is she was thinking deeply on the past for some reason. I mean, she was so young, so it must have been something that um, emotionally affected her. She was so absorbed within herself. She was very dreamy, um, just filled with imagination and that was influencing everything and she was quite sensitive to the emotions of other people she was upset though um, just this utter extreme sensitivity and she would react to these situations like stuff it, everything was just she felt was so harsh and like attacking her um, now when she got back down to reality and things would calm down, she was um, very compassionate, could be very helpful and loving to whom she chose, um, even understanding. But she had these major issues that she was struggling with. She couldn't get out of her head, um, which is, again, not uncommon for a person who's just stressed or uh, especially with mental illness. They're just trapped inside their head, feeling disconnected from their body. So um, she had a very serious mind and she was excellent when, you know, um, she saw something that she wanted. She wouldn't uh, shy away from it. And it looks like she was um, not afraid to do what she needed to do, but she was really worried over non-essential bullshit. Um, she worried over stuff that had nothing of serious it wasn't that serious importance and um, she was just irritable she wouldn't lighten up and um, it looks like she was experiencing these difficulties because of her being so damn critical um, she would have this um, panic attacks and it looks like um, I'm sure the drugs weren't helping either um, it looks like she's just really concerned about all these details, but she was so jacked up. She wasn't organized inwardly, and so she had this um, anxiety, this, this mental um, disintegration. Um, it's like a, a massive ball of energy that's just ready to explode and then evaporate. It's like, it's like an explosion, and boom, there's peace like a, a, a mass of chaotic, stressed energy, and then peace, like that. Um, so she was really assertive and independent, um, rather than wanting to work with other people. She wanted to be different, she wanted to be powerful, but she was very impulsive, and she needed to take a balanced approach, but she would go off half-cocked. Um, so she knew she needed to make changes. I mean, she was smart about what she needed to do, but whether she did that or not is a whole nother thing. Um, she could be very friendly once again. I mean, she did have a heart. She knew how to love 
It's just um, she didn't know how to love herself. And at the end of the day, she was very much like a child, you know, do what I want uh, or I'm going to throw a tamper tantrum. She wasn't at home in this world. She preferred uh, isolating. And she was never one who could make a decision. today's episode. I appreciate your support more than words can say. Be sure to check out my other social media in the about section as well as my other channels to find a fit that's right for you. Also subscribe and hit that notification bell for a reminder to stay on top of mastering your life as we go through this journey together.